Hey, Richard Knudsen here. It's July 26th, and about a week ago, Microsoft made some pretty significant changes to the Dynamic CRM Online. Uh, in particular, they uh, did what I sort of refer to as the, uh, the Office 365 takeover of Dynamic CRM. So it's uh, probably not surprising to you if you pay, atten pay attention to the Dynamic CRM um, marketplace that uh, Dynamic CRM Online in particular is going to be increasingly integrated with Office 365 and I know the reasons for this are good to provide a, a richer, more integrated, uh, more seamless experience but in the first real public uh, iteration of this I've got to say it may be richer and more integrated but it's definitely not more seamless. A good way to see that is in the provisioning process for a 30-day free trial. For a long time, as a matter of fact, ever since Dynamic CRM Online was launched a few years back, uh, it was a pretty simple process to create a 30-day free trial. Um, just use your Windows Live ID. You could create as many as you want, so that was nice for creating demos for customers or maybe CRM Online sandboxes for, uh, for training environments. There were all kinds of uses for these things. Um, now, what we need to do is so different from what it was before and a lot more work and just much, much less scalable, I think, that uh, I had to uh, come in here and, and record this just so I and the guys on my team, if nothing else, could remember how to do this from time to time if you do need to set up a free trial. So I'm going to go through that process now, and you'll see the difference immediately. When you click free trial, you come in here. This looks pretty similar. But if I click sign up now, you see this. So what we have to do now, we can't use our Windows Live ID anymore for Dynamic CRM Online. So apparently that goes away for all new organizations that are going to be provisioned here. We need to set up a, a new account. On, uh, it's a, on Microsoft.com. It's a Microsoft Online Services account. So for every new organization that you provision, this 30-day free trial process, you have to set up a new account. It doesn't take too long, but it's certainly different. Let me go through this, and I'll just uh, do this process here. I'll, I'll pause the recording for a second so you don't have to watch me type, and then I'll resume when I get down to the bottom here, which is the, the payoff. Okay, I've just entered some standard information, and I told the truth here. So my name, you can put any organization name in here now. This is no longer significant. The organization name in the Halcyon days of a week or more ago um, was the name of your CRM organization. Not anymore. So you can put anything you want, your organization name, address, all this information. Get down to email. Now, I can enter any email I want here. This email address that I'm entering here happens to be my Windows Live um, account, but that's not significant anymore. You can enter any email you want. It doesn't need to be a Live ID. It doesn't need to be associated with a Live ID, I should say, anymore. This is just where you get communications and links to the, your the organization you set up and things like that. The key difference is this. I have to create a new domain name and check availability. So this is the Office 365 account that you need to create every time. So, and you can only have one CRM organization per um, Office 365 account. So if what the Office 365 team wanted to do was to sort of create a profusion of uh, temporary Office 365 accounts, at least from CRM consultants like yours truly, we will have definitely accomplish that. Um, how do you do this? Well, well, I would recommend if, you're, if you need to do this a fair amount, which a dynamic CRM consultant does, come up with a naming convention so you can remember these things. So, for example, I might say RGK CRM demo, and then I'll date stamp it. 2612 dot on Microsoft.com. Then I can check availability here, and with something as cryptic as that, but at least something that I can remember, chances are it's going to be available. Then you have to create a new user. ID. So let's suppose I always take the same approach, Richard Knudsen. 
Now, password, keeping track of these credentials is going to be problematic, but at least I can use the same password that I've used for other um, Office 365 accounts. So it's not checking for passwords, it checks for unique combinations of Office 365 accounts and passwords. So my convention is to use the same, I've got a temporary pa or a password that I use for this stuff, only for this stuff, um, and I just always use the same one. Then, fortunately, the capture, the only thing I like about this process, this provisioning process, better than the, uh, the old Windows Live one, is that the uh, captcha is much easier to read here. So I can even do this one. I pretty much get these every time. There. And I don't want to be contacted. I can accept and continue. So the provisioning process is entirely different and boggles my mind that this was done without much warning. But let's go ahead and finish this off. Save and continue. Now, what we've got here is we've got our Microsoft online or Office 365 account here. Now that's another big, big uh, difference is when you set up your CRM online organization, you, you administer it through here. You don't, for example, add users through the dynamic CRM UI anymore. You would add users here. Um, and the first thing that has to happen in order for me to do much here is to set up the dynamic CRM account. And since that can take a while. What I'll do now is I'll switch to my inbox and we'll take a look at a different, we'll sort of let that spin away. So it'll work in the background. And now what I can do is let's go to my inbox and here's, a, here's an email that is the email that you get once the trial is set up. So after that provisioning process is done and the thing is set up, you get an email like this and you can see that the way this works is you're going to need to go to this portal, the same portal will sign every, in every time, but then the user ID is the user ID that I, I just set up. So you can see this one, Richard Knudsen at RGK CRM demo 0723.12. So here's my the trial that I set up on the 23rd. So that's, that's my sort of faking date stamping scenario. So now I can actually go to one. This one's already provisioned, so let's not wait for the other one. And what I'll do is I'll sign out because I'm signed in as the old um, the, at the office, as the Office 365 account that I just provisioned. See, you can see that here, 726. So let's sign in with a different user ID and sign in with Knudsen. That won't be, or actually I can just, it would be nice if we could copy and paste that. At. I think I'm, I'm inadvertently illustrating how uh, convoluted the new process is until you get used to it. Dot on Microsoft.com. I believe I got that right. Password. So here's what it looks like once the thing is set up. So remember, this is Microsoft. This is Office 365. This is the Office 365 administrative portal. I can navigate to the CRM right from here. So here's my. 30-day free trial that I provisioned the other day. So this one's all done. And it does, you know, once you're in here, this process is the same. You know, everything about it is the same, except for customizations are publishing more slowly since last week. But maybe that's a coincidence. But if you go to administration, click on users, in the olden days, we would provision users here. But if I add a new user... Here, what I'm told to do is I need to go to the Office 365 admin portal. So here's another um, difference. And there's the email that I got from just a 
one that I just provisioned, so it doesn't take too long. So I can click here. You might think that you could just do it here, but if you click there, you are taken back to the admin portal um, for the Office 365 account, and here's where you add new users. So if I'm going to add a new user here, what I have to do is, suppose I'm going to add Nick, and I'll just call him Nick Z, because spelling is verbulous. Fair amount of work. Nick Z at creates a new user effectively at this domain. And do I want this user to have administrator permissions? In this case, yes, I do. And this will be a, uh, oh, what do I want? Billing administrator, password, service administrator. How about a service administrator? I have no idea what those things are. I guess i got to learn those, huh? And then I'll use Nick's address. Spell out his name. Get that right. Let's see. Oh. Ah, oh, there. Oh, slash. Thank you. Location. Yes. Then we go next. And go ahead and uh, I'll send the results to me in email. I guess that's what I'm supposed to do. Okay. So temporary password there. And it can change his password. Or maybe I gotta change it. I don't know. I guess I gotta figure that one out. Um but anyway, so the process is definitely uh, definitely changed. And hopefully, one of the things that will happen is we will get the ability to, pr to provision multiple instances, multiple CRM organizations underneath the same Office 365 account. To me right now, that's the big, the big miss, the fact that we have to set up. A, uh, a separate Office 365 account. I can't imagine the customer experience here, by the way. Customer that wants dynamic CRM, wants to set up a 30-day free trial, needs to go through this process, create an Office 365 account for their 30-day free trial. They don't even know if they're going to go live or not. Uh, can't, effectively, it cannot be created for them by a consultant. So they have to do it themselves. Um, or at least I don't know the use case, how a consultant, you know, a third party would set up somebody's free trial for them. Um, and then they need to know that that would ultimately, if they want to maintain that, the domain name, you know, and your company domain name, you're not going to enter RGK CRM demo 07-26-12. Um, you know, they need to uh, have that be their, their, their sort of permanent domain name um, or be savvy enough to know that that's, that's sort of a th if they're, if they're going to, you know, launch with a different um, CRM organization. They need to be savvy enough to know that they got to create sort of a fakey domain name the first time around and then come back later and create their real, real one. But hopefully, anyway, this process uh, will get ironed out and actually become more seamless over time. Keep our fingers crossed, huh?